Lads! Welcome back to Fusion YGO. Today, we will be starting our How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Building 101 videos. Before we begin, I ask that if you enjoy this video or find it informative, consider subscribing as it helps this video get views and share it with people that are looking to enter competitive play. In part one, we will be going over choosing a deck and learning a deck. Yes, this will be a multi-parter, but I am doing it this way to provide the best and most thorough information that I can. Lads, before we dive into this video, I want to introduce you to someone who is a real flair for rogue strategies. I recommend checking out my friend, Team NDL. He is the host of the Discord I'm a part of, and has brought some smaller channels a place to work together. Check him out and let him know Patrick from Fusion YGO has sent you. Link in the description. Now, on with the video. Choosing a deck. When choosing a deck, there are a few factors that, have, that you must take into consideration. These factors can be broken down into two categories, playstyle and budget. And once you know these two categories answers, you can then find a deck to match. So let's get a little more in depth with our categories and build a deck. Playstyle is incredibly important to choosing a deck. There are four basic playstyles in Yu-Gi-Oh! Those are Control, Combo, also known as Break My Board, OTK, and FTK. Before moving forward, let me give you a brief description of each. Control decks. A control deck is a deck that controls the pace of the game through card advantage. Combo. A combo deck is a deck that builds a specific board as often as possible with specific lines of play. OTK. OTK, or one turn kill, is a deck that is designed to beat your opponent in one turn, typically a blind second deck. And FTK. FTK, or first turn kill, is designed to win without your opponent ever getting a turn. Control decks range from Sky Striker, Altergeist, and Subterror. Combo decks are similar to Pendulum, At Emancipator, and Salamangrate. OTK decks are decks like Dinosaur, Grenmaju OTK, and even Fluffles. And FTK would be decks that you've probably heard of, like Frog FTK, Danger Dark World FTK, Slash Draw FTK. So now that we have an outline of the play styles, it's up to you to pick the style that suits you. And now that we have the play style, and you've decided what kind of play style you personally prefer, Let's talk about the uncomfortable topic, budget. When building a deck, you have to know what you can afford to spend. This means choosing a deck and decks that fit in your price range. If playing on a lower budget, this could mean playing decks and archetypes that inherently gain or and maintain advantage. Salamangrate is a good, a good example of this, as the core is a structure deck. When playing on a budget, staples, like Ash, are cards that you should prioritize after the core. Choosing a deck. When choosing a deck, it is imperative that you know your playstyle and budget. Without these, you are going to potentially build a deck you either don't enjoy playing or can't afford. Now that you have chosen a deck, you need to learn how to play it, how it works, what beats it, Everything about it. So, in this section of the video, we are going to go over a few ways for you to learn the deck. Let's start with the controversial one. Net decking. Net decking is an important resource for building and learning a deck. Typically when net decking, you'll be able to play and learn what has already succeeded, and it helps to know why. Net decking gives you a good baseline to make adjustments to your individual specifications. But before you make changes, I recommend going to the next sections, which begin with tutorials. Tutorials will help you see combos and lines of play that the deck can do. This also will show a few of the interactions the cards in the deck have. This will help you in identifying key cards and weaknesses. But before we talk about those, we need to move on to the next section. Playtesting. 
Playing the deck that you net decked is the final part I recommend before making any changes. Playing some games with the deck as is will help you uncover strategies you may not have thought of and using online resources and in person to play the deck and find out how it works. It just gives you more opportunities to figure out why this deck succeeded, where yours may have been coming up short, or when learning a deck from scratch, how it works. Weaknesses. Now that we've played the deck and learned what others have had success with, it is time that you identify the deck's weaknesses. What is a hard matchup? What cards hurt you? How do you play around specific cards and etc.? How do you circumvent these weaknesses, you may ask? Well, two things you can do. First, figure out the cards that you can add to combat these weaknesses. The other is key cards. Knowing your key cards. Knowing the cards you need to perform your strategies. Win condition is vital. Once you know what you need, you are able to make the adjustments to combat the deck's inherent weaknesses and the weaknesses that just come up in matches. But now that we've done all that, we have what is going to easily be the longest part of this video and hopefully the most informative for deck build. The final part of learning the deck is knowing the probability of how often you will see and be able to perform a combo or lines of play. I recommend a hyper geometric calculator to calculate the percentages of how often you will see your starter cards and combo cards. So, for easier understanding, let's go over the equation to better assist you. The upper, the uppercase N in your de is your deck count. So, looking at this picture that's on the screen right now, it's how many cards you run in the deck. And for this example, we're going to use 40. So, let's move on to the next, the next letter in, that you need to worry about. The lowercase N is your starting hand which is always going to be five. So this number is pretty simple to figure out, but it's helpful to know where everything is going to be going. The uppercase M is the number of starters in the deck. This example, we're going to use three. So now that, now we have the uppercase N, which is showing our deck count of 40. We have the lowercase N, which is our starting hand, which is always going to be five. And we have the uppercase M, which is the number of starter cards or cards we need to see in our opening hand, which we're going to say is three. The final number, the final letter that you're going to see is X, which is the number of the M, uppercase M cards you want to see. Um, it should almost always be one, but it depends on what you're calculating out. So for this one, for this example, we are going to use the number one. And now that we've plugged all those numbers in, we're going to hit populate or calculate. And after populating, you'll see that you have a 30% chance of opening one of your starters. Conversely, you have a 66 and a quarter chance of not seeing any. Now, when it comes to M, it, the capital M, if you have cards that search them out, you can include those into your count. The math and understanding how to get there is incredibly important. It helps break down the importance and give you an idea of what your opening hands should look like. All right, lads, that is going to conclude part one of How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Building 101. Next time, we will be going over making adjustments and rogue matchups. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, consider leaving a like. And until next time, lads, good fun. Have luck.